In 2019, I attended a free backyard concert at Trinity House Cafe in Leesburg. The reason I went to this concert is because on social media, I saw an ad and the musician who was featured in the ad looked really cute and I just thought, well, what's the harm in going? I was recently single, so I figured it could be fun. I could maybe meet him, who knows? I end up going to this concert and toward the end of his set, I started to think, well, maybe I should go and say hi and introduce myself. But fear got the best of me and I did not end up introducing myself to this handsome stranger. So I went home and kind of forgot about the whole thing. 13 months later, um, during the 4th of July fireworks in Washington, DC, I was sitting by the banks of the Potomac River with my family, and there was a woman nearby sitting under a tree, and she started having a conversation with us. After talking with her for a few more minutes, we learned that she had a very single nephew living in Washington, DC, and she was asking if I wanted to be set up with him. At first, I was a little hesitant, but I agreed, and then she told me his name. And after she told me his name, I immediately had a flashback to that 2019 concert at Trinity House Cafe. I thought to myself, that's the same guy. Two years later, after meeting this woman, I was at the altar with my friends and family, and I was saying vows to this same man. A lot of people hear that story and they think, wow, you met your soulmate. That's amazing. But can Catholics actually have soulmates? Is that really a thing? So let's define what a soulmate is. If we define soulmate as this is the only person I can marry, then no, Catholics don't believe in soulmates because God has given us free will. We have the ability to choose who we want to marry. So when we think about how God orchestrates things like this, he always takes into account our free will. He's not hindered by our free will, but he takes it into account. In the Catechism, paragraph 1627, it reads, I take you to be my wife, I take you to be my husband. This consent that binds the spouses to each other finds its fulfillment in the two becoming one flesh. Because there are so many people that we could choose to marry, that's why prayerful discernment is so important in dating, and it's so important to take that relationship to God and say, hey God, what do you think about this? Is this the right relationship for me? Is this something that you want me to continue in? And so when I was dating my husband, these are things that I was thinking about and praying about, and these are things he was also thinking about and praying about. And ultimately, when we got to the altar and we said yes to one another, it's through that yes that we are choosing to love each other and we are saying no to every other option that's out there. In marriage prep, we actually signed a document that said, yes, I'm free to marry this person. There's no constraints, there's no pressure. I'm choosing this for my life. I'm choosing to love this person and to be with this person until the day I die. If marriage is God's will for your life, he will present opportunities for you to say yes or no, depending on the circumstances. But it's up to us to prayerfully discern through those opportunities and determine what does God want me to do, but also what do I want to do? It's up to us to take all the opportunities he presents to us to prayer so that we can fully say yes to him in whatever vocation he's calling us to.